Well, thank you guys for coming out to our real estate talk. Um, I wanted to try to just understand the crowd a little bit. Uh, first of all, how many of us were here in November when there was a hurricane in our last one? Yes, well, thank you guys for supporting us and we appreciate you coming back. How many of you is your first time coming to one of our talks? Thank you, a lot of new faces here, which I think is indicative of what's happening in our little coconut grove. So um, the idea tonight is to sort of explore uh, the numbers and what's happening in the real estate market here in Coconut Grove. Um, we're gonna spend a little bit of time comparing ourselves to where we were before the pandemic, sort of what happened during the pandemic and where we are now, and hopefully with the crystal ball looking a little bit more forward into where we're going. Um, this night will go much better if you guys ask questions or drink a lot, either one, works well with me. So um, for those of you who have not been here before, my name is Riley Smith, welcome again. Uh, been born and raised in Miami and in Coconut Grove, um, so been a resident here for a very long time, proud alum of Coconut Grove Elementary, and um, 22, 23 years doing real estate, mostly focused here on Coconut Grove. So. Um, the idea tonight is hopefully for you to leave with a better understanding of where we are in the market. Please, the more questions you ask, I promise the better this is gonna go. Um, we are very analytical and very into the numbers. So if you're not a numbers person, you may take a nap. I will not hold it against you. But um, if you have any questions as we're flipping our slides, let us know. You guys all have copies of all of the slides here. And if you want any more afterwards, we will email you this uh, whole presentation. It is being recorded, so if any of you are wanted in any other state, you may not want to be on TV, um, but it, I just wanted to let you know we are recording. So, um, Before we start, a little bit about the numbers. So Coconut Grove is very unique, as we all know. Um, one of the unique features about Coconut Grove is that it's not really a city in the city of Miami. So all of our data, we've been collecting ourselves for over 15 years, so these numbers are numbers that we've curated. You can't get these numbers straight off the MLS because uh, 33133, our zip code, is shared with a good part of the other side of US-1. So when we're talking numbers here, you can trust that every number here is something that we have vetted as we've done uh, with the condos, townhouses, and single family for many, many years. So just want to put that caveat out there. So today we're going to start. It's very loud in the back. Oh. Kevin, you sh close that door, Kevin. Thank you. Can you guys hear back there, everybody? Okay. All right. So today we're going to do a little bit different. In the past, it's been all things Coconut Grove, but I just want to talk a little bit about what's happening in Miami real estate in general, and then we'll dive into Coconut Grove and see how it compares to Miami. So our first, whoop, oh, too fast. Here we go. So our first slide, this is the Miami single family market for the last 10 years. So I wanted to just take some time to talk about what's happening in our market here in Miami. Um, a few big headlines that you may not have read or heard about is sort of where Miami is trending and what's going on in Miami right now. So Goldman Sachs just put out an article predicting that Miami and one other city would probably be the only two major cities to have an increase in value. Um, and we have had, Miami in general has had an increase in its home value for the last 11 years. It's also one of the only few cities in the United States to have that happen. So we're on a very good run. Um, I think this year we'll probably end up, it may challenge itself this year and you'll see why when we get into the numbers a little bit. Um, but another interesting fact just to keep in mind when you hear about the numbers of Coconut Grove, uh, Coconut Grove is certainly a little bit of a different market than Miami. But in March, for the first time ever, the average single family home closed in Miami, which is you know, obviously all of Miami, at 900 plus thousand dollars. So you go back a few years, you'd be talking 300, 400,000 was our average single family home. So just in the last three years, not just Coconut Grove, Coral Gables, and all of the markets that we're familiar with, but all of Miami has seen an incredible surge in its property values. Um, so when we look at this chart, we're going back 10 years. This is single family homes in Miami. So pre-COVID for seven years, we're just bumping along, pretty much status quo, inventory is on the top. This is pending sales, and then we have our closed sales here. And then obviously we all know what happened March 15th, 20th uh, here. So as soon as COVID happens, right, we start to see immediately a giant decrease in our inventory. Uh, if you go and look at the numbers here, if you go back to 2019, we had almost 7,000 homes for sale in Miami. And then if you look at the lowest tier, we were down to 2,000 homes. So a lot of people took their homes off the market, a lot of people sold off market, and then obviously there was a lot of sales happening at that time. 
And if you can see at the bottom of the chart here, we're slowly bouncing around, inventory starting to come back, but the number of sales is declining, and I think we may end up with less sales this year than we have in the past. So uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Miami as a whole. I think you know everybody knows you know Miami. Everybody's very bullish on Miami. Everybody loves our weather. They love our taxes. Some love our politics. Some hate our politics. But it is driving a lot of people here. Um, I've been traveling for a lot for real estate conferences, and I used to do this a lot. And nobody really would talk about Miami, know about Miami. Now, anytime anybody sees my name tag and I say Coconut Grove, everybody knows where Coconut Grove is. So, I think uh, the future is very bright for us here in the Grove, and I feel like. Um, we're going to get into numbers, and you guys will see why I'm so bullish. So, with that being said, here we go. So, this is Dade County, just taking a quick snapshot of the COVID time, so that you can just sort of see where inventory went during COVID, all the way down, and then we're slowly starting to work our way back up. Um, we still have an inventory problem in Miami, as does the whole country, um, and I don't know that that's going to unfix itself, or I don't know that's a word, but fix itself any time in the near future. So, all right, so here we go. Single family homes, for those of you who don't know me, I do sp spend a lot of my time on the single family market here. That's just been something that's been our bread and butter for a long time. But we will get into land sales, condo sales, and townhouse sales. So bear with us if that's something that's of interest to you. And yes, Jack, we'll talk about new construction at some point. All right, so this is a snapshot of where we are today with our inventory in Coconut Grove. Again, single family homes, there's roughly 4,000 single family homes. And uh, today we have 65 on the market, as you can see, which is a pretty good decrease from December 31st. So these numbers are compared to the end of last year. Um, what's interesting about the number of homes for sale is obviously it's low, but of the 65, those that represent, there's probably 15, maybe even 20 that are currently under construction or have not even started construction, but they're selling the land and or the projects. So really, if you want to buy a home today in Coconut Grove, you probably have about 50 options. Um, going back pre-COVID, you probably had 150 to 200. So that really shows you sort of where we are in terms of our inventory right now. So um, contracts have increased in the first quarter so far, 25%. This is just an insane number, and we're going to see a lot of insane numbers. But right now, if you just take the active listings on our MLS, you'd be almost 6.5 million is the average house uh, for sale. So, I mean, the numbers are, yes, sir? The December 31st of last year. So first quarter compared to the end of last year. So it's a small sample size, obviously, with only, we've only had 18 sales, but this is the listings, yes? These are your listings. No. I wish. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> That's correct. That's average. We have six houses over 20 million. <laughs> so um, that number is obviously a little skewed because we do have a few very ambitious sellers that have some houses on the water. For the first time ever, we have multiple houses listed over 40 million. There's one right here in Campus Gain. There's another just down the road. So, so you're going to see in a minute where the median lies, which is a little more telling. Um, right. But anyway, these are the numbers. Right. Yes? What's the average, uh, you know, square footage? Average size of a home? Yeah. I don't know. Sorry. Coconut Grove has, it's so, it's, it's so varied everywhere, different, so I, I don't know the average square footage. Sorry. I can tell you the average price per square foot. That's coming up. Um, so here we go. This is the average right now, what we're asking. We're just down a little bit less than 1% um, than we were before. So here, yes? How many of the active listings are eight-figure numbers? Eight-figure numbers? One, two, three, four, five. Seven. Well, we'll take the median. We didn't do that, but we have the median. So, so if you look at the median number, it's a little more representative of our market right now. So the median number of those 65 is 4.3. I'm guessing if you took out the top and took out some of the future development, we'd probably be jumping down more like 3.2, 3.3 if I had to guess. Um, but that's a guess. Uh, also, the median price per square foot is only one, you know, 111,000 here, so, or 1,175. One so this is you know, where we are with our inventory right now. These numbers are all historic. We've never seen anything like this. I've been doing it 22 years. 
Our inventory is nothing like it should be. Um, and I think it's going to take a while for that inventory to build. And we'll talk about that as we get into some of the closed sales numbers here in a minute. So, right, Yes, sir. The time to close. He was asking like, how long does it take to close? So in the Grove right now, we're running about 60 days is the average. A cash deal may close in 30. We rarely don't go past 60. 45 to 60 is the average closing time. So, all right. So this is one of my favorite things to look at right now. So this is 2019, December 31st, what the market looked like. So we had 152 homes for sale. We had between these two, we had 97 under 2 million. How many people can guess how many we have under 2 million today? Any takers? <laughs> we'll get there in a second. So anyway, so this is obviously was the dominant portion of our market. And then we jumped over here, the two to three million. And then we really did not have many, you know, between here and here, and those r rarely traded. So now we're gonna look at where we are today. So today, we have exactly five homes under $2 million compared to just three years ago, where we had almost 100. Obviously now our dominant market is the three to five range. We really didn't even talk about this. We're at 19 here, and there's one home for sale in this part of town. I have it on Douglas Road. If anybody wants to live there, under a million dollars. Give me a call, it's a deal. I hope my seller's here. Okay, all right, so any questions on this? This to me is one of the most, this two categories is just, now this two categories, right? So what's happened to our town is unbelievable. If you want to ask, do this later, don't answer it. No. How much is cash hmm. Great question. How much is cash versus mortgage? So in the Grove, we wouldn't have a way of telling you that, but the numbers in Dade County, um, in the luxury market, a million and plus, they're averaging 67% cash. And in the overall market in Dade County, they're averaging 43 to 45%, it's somewhere in that range. So almost half of all deals in Dade County are cash. In the luxury space, it's getting close to two thirds. So, any questions, guys? All right. So this is just what has happened so far, January 1 to December 31st. Uh, we've only had 18 sales. You're going to see in a minute why that number is pretty stark, is pretty sad. Um, the average sale price this year, 2.5. Here's our average sales price per square foot. Uh, 91 days on the market, which has gone up probably 100% in the last three months, I would say. So the days on the market, we were seeing five days, 10 days, seven days. That has slowed down a little bit. Um, and part of the reason is our inventory is just not that good right now. We don't have enough of it. Um, and then we are back finally to what is a historic number for us. So Coconut Grove, as long as I've been doing real estate, the average transaction has been about 90% of the asking price. So we've always had about a 10% you know, delta on ask to sale ratio. So anybody have any questions on that? So again, very small sample size with only 18 homes. Massive, which is why we, don't, why we only have 18 sales. Sellers are here and buyers are here. And interest rates are everywhere in between and that's kind of causing the problems. Um, so we'll, it's gonna be more evident as we go along. But yes, you're correct. Anybody else questions before we go on? No? All right, so here we roll in. So 18 sales, again, 50% less transactions this quarter than this same time last year. Um, and a lot of reasons and I'll get into that in a second. We're at the median sale is only 2.2 instead of 2.5. Um, we've got the median sales price is 7.83 per square foot. The 91 days stay the same and the 91% here. So um, the shocking number here is really how few sales we've had in Coconut Grove. I think that's probably the lowest quarter I've ever seen in 20 something years. All right. So this is one of my favorite charts because this just shows us we're going all the way back to 2008 just to show how, how many sales generally we have in the single family market. Again, our market is only 4,000 homes, but it doesn't turn over like a normal 4,000 home community. So, um, but obviously 286 is unbelievable. Um, you know, 2000, so we have, you know, we're bumping along. COVID starts right here. We have an election year and COVID year at the same time. 
everything goes crazy, and then all of a sudden in 2021, it seemed like every New Yorker found Coconut Grove. So, <laughs> and I think probably 200 of these are New Yorkers, if I had to guess. Um, so, you don't like New I love New Yorkers. They pay cash. <laughs> There's one back there who bought a great house. Um, so anyway, the, this number obviously is also what is affecting these two numbers, right? So those of you who didn't understand what was happening in COVID, right? It was just a mad dash to get to Miami, to get down here. I think everybody discovered Coconut Grove. I think there was this whole process of, I gotta get out of these big cities, right? I'm not happy with the taxes or the politics or the crime and what's going on or the restrictionness. So everybody's coming to, to Miami and everybody generally said, oh, I'm going to Miami, I'm gonna go live on Miami Beach. I heard this story a hundred times. And they go start looking around Miami Beach and Miami Beach, as we all know, is where we wanna go have fun, but we don't wanna spend the night there, right? So slowly but surely, they kind of dawned on them that that wasn't the community that they were looking for. And I think everybody sort of said, okay, well, Coconut Grove, south of downtown, I'm used to big city living, I wanna be close to downtown, uh, they have the best schools, we got the clubs, we got the water, we got our little village that we love. And all of a sudden, literally, Coconut Grove is on the map. Um, and so, yeah, these 286 sales is you know, a number I can't imagine we'll ever see again. Um, but the impact that that had was, again, going back here to almost one of our lowest years last year. And obviously, you can do the math. We're probably not even going to hit 100 homes this year sold. Um, because anybody who had a home, anybody who thought about selling, probably had somebody like me knock on their door and say, I have a bag of cash for you if you can get out in 60 days, right? And that was what was happening. So all of our sellers who would naturally be selling this year, next year, and probably the year after that, probably were approached and had an opportunity or saw what was happening in the market and made an earlier decision to get out of Miami. So this number is drastically impacting this number here. And you know, I hope that we'll get close to 100, but it's gonna be tight. I don't see with our inventory so low. Yes, Robin. So, you know, you would think there was no more migration from New York, but what I have seen, the migration is still there. There's just no houses to buy, yeah. right? So a lot of them, and, and we don't cover rentals in this part of the show, but a lot of them became renters. Um, they would be buyers. There's still plenty of buyers out there. If you have a nice home that is move-in ready, there's 10, 15 buyers at every price point that we're talking about. There's just what's on the market is, and you'll see in a minute, is incredibly overpriced and probably needs a lot of work. And most of the out-of-towners, whether they're from LA or New York or wherever, Chicago, they're not interested in doing any work, right? So renovated and new construction are selling at a crazy premium. And what's left is stuff that does need some renovations and we're not seeing those trade like we used to. So the demand is still there. I mean, I have a $4 million house in the North Grove that I'm selling the other day on Friday. I had three 40 plus couples come through together and before we all figured out, they had all worked for Citadel. They had all just got transferred down here. They told me there's another 100 of them coming. They all want to live in Coconut Grove. They all want to try to figure out how to get into our schools. If any of you know how to get into schools, you can sell that for a lot of money, by the way. So, um, yes, sir. How many of those are in Coconut Grove people that are selling and buying? So the question is, how many people are intra, like Coconut Grove natives, either upsizing or downsizing? In my experience, very, very little. Right? The people that are coming here now, our prices have almost doubled, and you're going to see that in a minute. They're, but where they're coming from, our prices are not so exorbitant. But the people that have been living here forever have had a really hard time figuring out how am I going to pay 100% more for a house I could have bought two years ago with a 6.5 interest rate when these guys are paying cash. You know, this is a, a major cash buyers here. Anybody else? Any more questions? Yes, sir, Scotty. Pray. A lot of praying. All right. Why do you think I'm here? I'm hoping there's some sellers in the room. All right. So single family price per square foot. Again, I'm sorry. We're numbers geeks here. and We really love our numbers. But obviously, you can see we were bumping along, bumping along. We came out of the recession. We we're in the 400s for a very long time. And then basically, COVID hits. And in two years, the average price goes up 100%. 
Um, so we've come down and backed off of that a little bit right now. But again, I think part of that is because we don't have the right product. If we had better homes, these numbers probably would not be this low. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure we're going to get to a moment in time in the very near future that we're not going to have a home less than $1,000 a foot. Um, you know, at all, and we're going to see new construction starting to push even higher and higher. My friend in the back there is hoping for 2,000 a foot on one of his houses. We'll see what happens. We did have one, so. Um, any questions on where we are and obviously what has happened? It is very natural, I think, that we pull back a little bit, right? Nothing goes up forever, but I don't see us getting much lower than this. Um, as we get new and better inventory, I think we're going to start to go back up again, personally. Okay, uh, here's the average sales price. So you can see 2022 average sales price 3.3 here. Again, we're up almost 75% in two years now and we were up even more of course when we were at our all time high. Um, but what's interesting here is just, you know, how we were bumping along, bumping along and then all of a sudden, you know, the average sales was a million and a half and now we're at almost three, so. And again, in 2023, we only have an 18 home sample size, right? So sample size is very small here. This, this is probably closer to the truth if we had a ton of inventory than where we are right now, if I had to guess. But right now, the, it's just slim pickings if you're a buyer. Here's another really cool chart. I love these pie charts. So again, we're gonna look at pre-COVID. These were the sales at the end of 19, right? So 2019, December 31st. We still had 53 sales under a million, and we had 78 sales under two million. We had just five here, and we had three in the luxury space. So fast forward, totally changed. We're down to seven here. We have no home sales this year here, eight in here, and then two and one. And I think these numbers are only gonna grow I mean, we're surely almost at the end of the $1 million entry point into a single family home in the Grove. Yes, sir? Do you have a sense on how many sales are off list versus? So the question is how many sales that are off market? I don't know how many, but there is quite a bit right now. It's very easy to sell your house off market. Every realtor probably has 10 buyers that are looking for certain properties. So I, I don't have a sense of a number. I know we've done quite a few, so I'm guessing my colleagues have done quite a few as well. Um, and that's also hurts us because we don't get to see the data from that, right? It's, we, don't, we don't comb the, the tax rolls for that data. So any questions on where we were or where we are? No? Pretty staggering though, huh? When you look at those numbers. All right. So I like to show this chart because I always get the question, when is the best time to sell my home? When are the most closings? When are the actions? So I want to go all the way back to this side here. So Pretty much as long as I've been doing real estate in, in Coconut Grove and in Miami, uh, June and December have been the two biggest months for closings, which makes sense because it's at the end of our two biggest seasons, right? We have a spring, we have a sort of a late winter, early spring season. People are moving, coming and going, schools, all those things. So we see historically a ton of closings in June. And then in Miami, because we're also in Florida in a tax state, we generally see a surge at the end of the year for people to be here before the start of the next year. So December is always the next big month. So it's just interesting to see what COVID did to us, right? It totally destroyed the normal pattern that we had in our market. As long as I've been doing this, from January until June, it's go 100 miles an hour. From June until September, you can just take a vacation. No one's buying, no one's nothing. And then we all come back in the fall and we have a second season. But if you see what happened in COVID, of course, with COVID hitting in March and then all the things happening here, you know, this April, out, it was such an outlier, right? This COVID was, you know, all of a sudden everybody was getting comfortable and that's when we see here. And now we're working our way back to, we saw June again in 2022 be the number one year. But these numbers are a little distorted just because we haven't had enough inventory probably to tell that. But I do believe we're getting back to our normal sales cycle, which means most of the time we'll see our closings in June and then again in December will be our biggest months which means if you're interested in selling, you should sell sometime after January, try to be under contract before summer, come back again in the fall, try to be under contract by the end of the year if you wanna capitalize on the markets. 
um, very opposite of almost all of my colleagues around the country where they are moving because of schools, where summer is their biggest time. Of course, up north, you're not selling as much in the winter, you're selling in the summer. But here in Miami, especially here in Coconut Grove, our buyers are mostly going to private schools. They're not as timed to the school calendar or worried about where they live, when they live. So that's why our seasons are a little different than most of the country. Anybody else questions? I'm good, okay. All right, so this is, I like this chart again. You know, it's only a small sample size of the year, but every price point generally has its own sort of price per square foot model. Um, so we've got the lower end price between one and two million, you see 75, and then the five plus is averaging out at 1,100 a foot. Obviously, when we get to the five plus, we're talking about gated communities, on the water, new construction, much larger homes. So that's why this number is significantly higher than there. Um, and again, a small sample size this year. So, any questions here, guys? No? Okay. You guys are a quiet crowd. Is that number like, I mean, I would imagine that that's kind of skewed because most of the high dollar houses are new, newly yeah. built. Right. And all those other ones are the older ones yes. that are being bought to be yeah, so, built. So. Right. So, the numbers are obviously this is new, this is gated, this is more desirable streets. This is stuff that is probably dated, needs a facelift if it's not getting torn down. We did take out the land sales, so these are all actual house sales. Excuse me. Yes? When you anticipate for North Grove, new construction in 2020, like summer There's a bunch of them being built right now, so there'll be a, in the fall, there's gonna be probably 10 coming online, I would bet you, if you looked in there, and if you're on a good street, you're probably pushing 1,100, 1,200 a foot, depending somewhere in that range. That's what we're seeing right now. <laughs> Yes? You already mentioned, I think, uh, interest rates one time. So you think the people buying in the world will come from prices and have so much money that they're paying most of the cash? Yes, sir. But we'll see the effect on our market. Interest rates still have an effect, whether you're paying cash or not. And a lot of people are offering cash, but then getting financing on the back end, right? They're borrowing against their own portfolios. They're playing with their money. So I've got a slide in a minute that you'll see the impact of the interest rates. Yes? They don't, they affect the buy. I mean, you would think they would, but there's still cash buyers that are, not, that are immune to the interest rates. But, but it affects the sellers on where they're gonna go. Yes, I'm gonna get to that in a minute, thank you. But that's a great point, yes. Yes, under AC, yeah. Yep, here. Not all of them, so there's only, I mean, again, these are the closed sales, so there's only like five of these. Not all of them do, some are smaller, so they're, you know, they're falling, like I just sold an 1,800 square foot for just under two million that was move-in ready, but then there's others that do need significant facelifts. So this, these next few charts that I'm gonna show you, this sort of shows the problem we're having in Coconut Grove. So right now, of all the homes that are currently listed for sale, the average Price per square foot is around $1,350 a foot. At the time all of them went under contract, the average went down to 916. So there was a massive price decrease here. And then when the 18 went under contract, they came all the way down to here. So what's happened to us is that we have a bunch of sellers that are technically 38% overpriced right now. You know? Um, and, and a lot of that is for a lot of different reasons. It's not apples to apples, it's not everyone exactly, but there is a group of sellers that are still hoping, we were seeing the COVID rush before, hoping the market was going up, which you'll see in a minute, that we're not quite going up right now, we're actually going down in the single family market. So there's a bit of a disconnect, but to your point, a lot of sellers have nowhere to go because they're holding three, 4% interest rates. Even if you downsize with the current rate, you're paying the same price, so they're kind of stuck. Yes, sir. If you, have, if you have such an interest in Coconut Grove and you have such a low supply, why would you say, I mean, why is the, why is the market coming down as opposed to at least maintaining it going? Because the quality of the product is not there to demand the high price per square foot. So what they're buying is a secondary and third dairy product in terms of its condition, its streets, its finishes. That's why the price per square foot are coming down. If we had 
50 new construction homes, these numbers would totally be different. We just don't have that. So my question is new construction, yes. right? let's say, if you were to compare North Grove new construction as opposed to South Grove, what, what would you? The numbers are bearing out right now, they're almost, almost equal. So what's happened in the last few years is a lot of the people that have come from up north and from LA and all these big cities, they are more interested in getting to downtown, getting to Brickell, than it was in the past. A few years ago, South Grove was way outselling North Grove in every category. But at this point, we don't even, we used to break up South Grove and Coconut Grove because they were almost two different markets. But in the last five years, they've blended together. And really, the new constructions, I mean, the highest priced new construction this year has been in the North Grove at 2,000 a foot. Um, so, you know, it's, you know, I think the South Grove has a character and charm and bigger lots and some other things that people would desire about it. But there is a new need to be closer to downtown, closer to Brickell, and closer to that part of the world. And that's driving the new construction there. So, but when you're looking at the average price that you see that it's coming down from 1300 if you were to have a new construction in North Grove, let's say in about a 7,500 square foot lot, but you're talking about maybe a five, four to 4,500 square foot home. When you call me for a listing appointment, we'll have a chat. <laughs> The answer is yes. New construction North Grove right now is running between four and five million for something on a 7,000 square foot lot with about 4,200 square feet, give or take. But that's sort of where we are right now. Some are asking five million. They haven't hit those yet, but they probably will eventually. Yes? No, it's not really. 10% off of here is here. So take 10% off of that, and you're kind of basically putting it at the same. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's not off of this number. It's off of this number. Okay, okay, this is where they started. Then they had a come to Jesus moment with their realtor, or they fired their realtor and got a new realtor, and then they lowered the price here. <laughs> so, yes? I don't. I'd be, you can spend... 400 foot or you can spend 800 foot. It's such a range. I, that's an animal I don't want to tackle. Yes, sir. No, no, no. This include, these are just the 18 homes that sold this year. Okay. That's their progression. Right. But it's indicative of the whole market right now. And most of the people that you know, are, are trying to sell their homes are in that general area, if you remember the earlier slides. So, all right, here we go. So, this slide, we've got a lot going on. It's probably easier if you do take it home and look at it a little bit later, but we've got mortgage rates in red, right? We've got sales prices in blue, and we've got number of homes that have actually transacted in green. So 2021 was a big moment for us, right? So 2021, we hit our peak in sales. The Fed starts to raise slowly, slowly, and then not so slowly. And obviously you see how the number of uh, price per square foot is going up, interest rates are going up, which is immediately causing sales to go down. So probably besides the lack of supply, the number one reason we don't have a lot of sales is that prices are probably too high and interest rates are probably too high. So we're praying that the Fed starts to lower. They've been trying to put me out of business for the last six months, but we made it, we're still here. Um, but I'm hopeful that we're gonna see an easing there. You know, in our market, being luxury and what we hear about cash and everything else, you would not think you would feel the interest rate, but Interest rates were killing us. The last six to nine months were probably the hardest for anybody selling real estate in Coconut Grove that I've seen in 20 years. Um, but then in February, the Fed made this tiny little decision and rates dipped, and there was a, a massive spike in energy. So the interest rates matter whether you're getting a mortgage or not. It just matters in the whole energy of the market. Uh, so I think as this starts to come back down, we're going to start to see this going back up. But also, we need the blue line to come back down. The gap is just way too high between asking price and what buyers are willing to pay right now. That makes sense to everybody? Yes? Okay. All right, so here we go. I wanted to show where we are in relation to the rest of our major competitors of neighborhoods. This is price per square foot. All of these numbers are down from a year ago. So, right, we've got Key Biscayne. We don't track Miami Beach. That's a different animal for us, but Key Biscayne, we're at almost 1.2. We're number two in the Grove. But the interesting thing is that all of these numbers are down since the end of last year. 
All right. So any questions left on single family before we go into, we're going to go land, then we'll hop into townhouses, hop into condos, and send you guys on your way. Questions? No? Everybody good? Yes. Hey, Rob, what's happening? No, no, no. It, well, there was one 2,000 sale up by Vizcaya. was not on the water. You could see the water if you stood on your tippy toes on the roof. Okay, so they caught an extra 1,000 for that. But no, in the Grove right now, and it's, it's trading on average smaller lots. You know, we have so much seven, 8,000 square foot lots. They're doing about 1,100, 1,200 in the North Grove especially. We haven't had as many trades in the South Grove. But it's somewhere between 1,100 and 1,300 probably right now. And then that's also depending on the product, right? There's some spec homes that are a certain level, and then there's some that just, you know, they're building almost custom homes. The high end is probably going to hit 1,500, 1,600, 1,700 as we go along. Yeah. Right, a bigger lot, a better street, those kind of things. Those are probably not falling into the 11, 1,200 average. That's more the smaller lot. They're squeezing these little modern boxes on there. Right. All right. All right, so land in Coconut Grove. We don't have a lot of it, um, but this is the progression of land sales over the last seven or eight years. Um, of course, just like everything else, we had a spike here. A lot of buyers weren't happy with what they found, so they decided to build themselves. Also, a lot of developers, I think, were bullish by the numbers that we were seeing. So we saw a very disproportionate number of sales happen here. There was also quite a bit of off-market land sales happening during this time here. So. Um, now, if we go here, we've only had three land sales this year, so the number has come way down. We're probably, if we hit 25 then again this year, we'll probably be lucky. Uh, it's just getting harder and harder to find and getting more expensive. And I think also developers are not so sure where the future is going to be right now, so they're not quite as eager, but we shall see. Yes? When you say land, what do you mean specifically? Because if you check the area and go back here, there's a lot of empty Yeah. Yeah, that would be land, yes. So, so land, I consider land just a vacant piece of land, but most of the land sales actually have an old house on them that have been neglected over time or no longer have the same value. Sooner or later, the developer rents them for a while, then they knock them down or the end user. Um, there are some, there are a disproportionate number of lots behind us in this area over here as well that are just waiting to be built. Um, so that would, so, but that's, this is, this year there's only been a few sales. Yes, exactly. Yep, that's what's happening. So if we look at pricing, obviously, again, just like everything else in the Grove, we were bumping along, and COVID really shot us up here. This number is pretty deceiving. We put it here because we just show the data. The numbers are the numbers. But two of these three land sales were in gated communities, the last one in Ye Little Wood for four million and change. So I think this number is a little bit inflated. Um, I'm guessing we'll probably come back to this number as the end of the year goes on. Um, anytime you have a gated community, a waterfront lot, something like that, you're gonna see a much higher number. Developers or end users can build much bigger houses there and get away with prices that are different level, so. Yeah. So just the question was just talking about, you know, in Coconut Grove, we obviously have a lot of building code, building restrictions, all kinds of pres preservation going on, just asking about what happens basically then. And yeah, those are the challenges that those sellers are having, and developers are very aware of that, so it's, it's a lot of due diligence beforehand. But there are some pieces of land with little houses that probably will never sell because of the size of the lot or the historic value of the home that they can't be knocked down. Anybody else? All right. So let's talk about townhouses. So the townhouse market in Coconut Grove, uh, for those of you who are not familiar, has generally lived right behind us here, right? Uh, 27th Avenue to 32nd Avenue was the original townhouse market. It's since expanded all the way over to Douglas, basically, from Bird Road and US 1 all the way down to Grand Avenue. Um, the reason for that is on that side of Grand, especially, um, the whole zoning is mostly duplex zoning, so a lot of the older homes over there you've seen come down, 
If you drive around west of 32nd Avenue now, every other home is a new modern box. So the townhouse market has really exploded here. Um, and you'll see in the numbers, the townhouse market in Coconut Grove is always sort of followed behind the single family market as people got priced out of single family homes, right? I think everybody wants the white picket fence and the dog in the backyard kind of idea. But as our prices in single family have got risen, you've seen the demand for townhouses really skyrocket. And you've also looked at now everybody has this walkability, right? All these people coming from the big cities, they want to walk, walk. So the center of Grove has really become much more popular than it was 10, 15 years ago. Um, and we'll see in the numbers as we go here. So, all right, so here's where we are today. So we, yes, please, Riley, please, Riley, Riley. They share, most townhouses in Coconut Grove share a center wall, and that's about it. Most of them don't. You have your own space, your neighbors have your own space. They're considered condos, just so that they could build a different footprint, but generally you don't. There are a few communities that share driveways, share a pool, but the, most of the ones that we're talking about are just those side-by-side two-unit buildings, and they share a common wall, share a roof, share insurance, and that's about it. So. So townhouse market today, we're down about 25% in the number of, for sale. Um, number of contracts are significantly higher than they were at the end of the year. We've seen a pretty big spike in that market. And then as we go along, you'll see the average list price. So the average right now is 1.8 million. It's totally crazy. 15 years ago, I built two townhouses on Indiana Street and sold them for 350,000 each and thought I was as top of the world. That same townhouse is worth 1.7 today. So things have really changed. Um, and then the average price here. So you notice here, in the townhouse market, all the numbers are going up. So because there's literally no houses to buy, people are being forced to buy townhouses. If you look at the median, it's even higher than the average sales price, which tells me we're probably moving up from here. It's gonna be pretty soon where a three, four bedroom townhouse is gonna cost you $2 million. Um, and then this is the median right here on price per square foot. So this is the inventory snapshot. Now we're going to look at where we are, the history a little bit. So again, very small sample size. We should have a lot more sold than we do right there. Um, the average sale is 1.2. There was a lot of the older townhouses that were not the new modern style that have sold. And, and that has brought this average down. The Mediterraneans that were so popular for so long, built in the 80s and the 90s, those are getting a little tired now. Uh, so that's probably representative of what you see here. Um, 64 days on the market, that's probably double from where we were just three, four, five months ago. And then last time we did our talk, townhouses were selling at 100% of asking price, and almost all of them were selling over at the end of last year. So it is slowing a little bit in the demand, um, but it's not slowing in much. So the median townhouse right now is only a million dollars, but there are a bunch of two bedroom townhouses that are mixed into this number. If you took those out, it would be significantly higher. Average price is about 650. So, and then this is a really, you know, again, this is going back to 2008. So 2008, we have our recession, we're bumping along. Finally, banks start opening up, right? The for, for, yeah, foreclosures, short sales, all that. We have a huge spike right here as they come to market and banks let everybody lend again. And then we've sort of settled into this 100 range. And then COVID gave us, you know, shot us back up again. If we had more inventory, this number would have been much higher, which is why if you drive around in west of 32nd Avenue, on every block, on every corner, they're building something. Uh, so the developers are trying to catch up with the demand there, and there's going to be a huge spike in more townhouses coming on the market in the next six to nine months. Um, but then look where we are here. So we're going to struggle even to hit last year's number probably this year. So any questions on townhouses? Anybody live in a townhouse? Hey, oh, quite a few, you guys. All right. You want to sell? <laughs> OK, let's talk. We got a few buyers. Yes, sir. Excuse me, guys. Yes. No, no. So that's mostly you're gonna see that in the single family market, actually, and the, and the reason you see that is the size of the lot, especially if you're in South Grove where you're dealing with some septic tank issues and a bunch of other issues, and also the city has changed 
how, the city, when they were building Mediterranean homes and Mediterranean townhouses everywhere, the, sort of the city said, we don't want every street to have a garage facing the street and that's all you see. So they made some adaptations to the, the setbacks and where and how you could put a garage on a property. And now most of them, if you notice, you have to go in and turn to get into your garage unless it's significantly set back. And that was done on purpose by the city to change the look. It probably had a negative effect. If you ask any developer, it surely had a negative effect. Made it a lot harder to put the jigsaw puzzle together. But that's not, there's no rule that if there was a garage or wasn't a garage, it's a product of the code for that particular property. And in the townhouses, almost all townhouses have garages. You can't put a car in it, but it has a garage. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here we can see sales price per square foot. Again, if we look here, right, it's the opposite of where we were in the single family homes. Townhouses and, I'll get to condos later, are both increasing in price right now. So big increase, obviously, since here, almost double since COVID, just like our single family homes. Questions here, anybody? Yes, ma'am. So the houses, the townhouses, is most of this area yeah. here, right? Yeah, 90% of our townhouses are from 27th Avenue uh -huh. all the way to 37th Avenue. Yes. What do they call? Are they townhouse? No, the single family homes are in the center area there. They follow more the townhouse numbers, yes. They do follow the townhouse Yeah, most of those single family homes in Center Grove will eventually get knocked down. I don't care how nice it is. The value of two townhouses is just gonna outweigh the value of most of those homes eventually. And how does it affect the single family home being in that area in between the yeah. I mean, if you're zoned duplex, it's, it's just your, your house is not going to keep up with the value of your land eventually because they can put two new houses there. So it's, it, it, it's you know, I mean, that's, there's only a few of them now. So there's not a lot left in that area. But it, that's a tricky, it's a very tricky thing to have a single family house in an area where everybody's now in a townhouse. But there is some value because of the walkability and other things. And there are a few exceptions, some really nice homes there. But for the most part, the older ones, the land value is going to outpace the value of the house. Yeah. All right. Any townhouse questions before we go? All right. Condos. So there are a lot of condos in Coconut Grove. It was way too much for us to continue to keep our numbers on all of them. So we only focus on the condos that are on the Bayshore Quarter, the bigger buildings, just for talking points. Um, we don't really focus on the small ones on Burr Road or 27th Avenue or that are mixed in. So. Just bear in mind that these numbers are mostly coming from the major seven or eight condo buildings on Bayshore Drive. We do take into consideration Park Grove, which is new, and we go down to, Gro to Grove Isle. Um, but before we get into that, I wanted to just show you, this is the sh same chart we saw earlier, just condos instead of houses. So again, you can see that if we go back pre-COVID, we're up over 14,000 condos for sale in Dade County. You go down to our lowest and we're only at 4,000. So these numbers really show you the inventory challenges that we're all having right now, um, which is why we're still very much in a seller's market, even though they're not quite getting top dollar. Um, and then you can see how demand is down here. And this year, we're, you know, this is only one third of a year, so we'll see where we end up. But you can really see the biggest difference is in the inventory. All right, so condos in Coconut Grove. Again, these are the buildings that we run the numbers on. We've got Grove Isle, Yacht Harbor, Grove Tower, the Ritz-Carlton, the two uh, Mutiny and Sinesta. We also have the Park Grove and Grove of Grand Bay mixed into here. So when we say Coconut Grove condos, that's what we're talking about, the bigger buildings, uh, just so you guys know. Um, the really interesting numbers in the Grove. The condo market in Coconut Grove has completely changed, and I'm gonna explain that, that in a minute. But uh, number of condos in those buildings right now, we're down about 10%, just under 50 for sale. We have a very healthy 21, which is up 200% since 30. So we, we really were struggling at the end of last year. Um, so this quarter, we've seen a big spike. Obviously, the price is crazy at $4 million for those buildings. Again, it's a little bit skewed because there are some penthouses that are 15, 20, and 30 million. We'll address that in a minute. And then your average price per square foot here, which is going up, not going down. Yes? What do you think is the condo inventory number did at the 
The number of total units, I, I don't, I'm, I would just totally be guessing, sorry. So if you add the median, you can see where there's so many luxury condos, the median for those you can't see in the back goes you know, from 4.5 on average all the way down to 2.3. So quite a significant drop in that where we are. And this is probably more representative of the average if you took out the 10 or so that are 15, 20, 30 million plus. Um, and again, the median here has not dripped that much down from the 1,500. So again, we've only had 19 sold, so a small sample size. We're averaging 2.2, it's about $1,000, 1,100 a foot. The days on market has doubled in the last three months. And again, this is not quite as big as a gap between the single family homes. Part of that I think is because the inventory is a little bit better in this market, doesn't need as much work, there's not as much negotiation room. All right. If you look at the median, this comes down to 1.8 if you can't see in the back, and it comes just basically down, basically the same. The median and the average are about the same right now. All right, so this, whoop. so this unit, this shows, we're almost done, guys. I appreciate your patience. We're about an hour, but we're gonna wrap up soon. Uh, and then we'll have some Q&A. So this, is, I really love watch, looking at this chart again. This is what happened to condos, right? Same chart, basically, that we had with single family homes. So everyone asked me what happened to the condo market. So the condo market, more than any other market, I think has changed completely in the last two years. Uh, Pre-COVID, most of these condo units were second homes, investment properties, or people who were downsizing. Once COVID hit and we started to have this surge of families from New York, Chicago, LA, all used to and very comfortable raising families in condos, wanting the security, wanting the doorman, wanting the amenities, all of a sudden, they all gravitated to our condos. And today, the amount of families living in our condos is significantly higher than it was two years ago. So completely new demographic to the condo market. And you're gonna see some of the buildings that have really been affected by that in a minute when I change the time. Any questions here for anybody? All right, so when we look at pricing, price per square foot, again, condos and townhouses continue to rise while single families have leveled out. Again, I think that's an inventory problem. If we had better inventory in single family, we would not see the dip. We do have better inventory in terms of the quality of the inventory in the condo market. Um, but I mean, if you go back again, pre-COVID, 529, literally double, right? Basically, everything is double. You take anything away from this, I need listings and everything is doubled. <laughs> all right, so this is an interesting, we, we like to break down all the buildings just so if you happen to live in them. Again, we're gonna send all of this information to you guys via email, but this just shows you the activity that's happening in all of the buildings that I mentioned to you, right? Last year, the Ritz-Carlton really had a hit bump up and we're gonna see that there. So these are last year's, I'm sorry, this is 2019 and, and our quarter right now, what's available. So if you look across the board, the inventory obviously is significantly down from pre-COVID. And that has led to pricing obviously going significantly higher. So this chart here shows you each of the buildings and where the sales, what the number of sales in all of those buildings. So just some things to point out. Obviously last year and the year before, I'm sorry, the year before, Park Grove was by far the most desired building here in Coconut Grove. Um, you know, we had, um, what did we have? Almost 50 sales in Park Grove. That was the new sexy, shiny toy on the market. Most of those are only in the first two towers. Tower three has had, tower one, I mean, on the water has had almost no turnover. So most of these sales are in tower that's on Tiger Tail and Mary and tower two. Um, but that one really had an impact. And again, now more than ever, families are living in these units. Grove Isle had a significant spike and also the Ritz-Carlton. Um, the Ritz-Carlton, particularly because of its size, those, those units are significantly bigger. The three bedrooms are much larger, much more accommodating for families. Um, yes, ma'am. Hey, ho, what's happening? What's up? What's up? Oh, yeah. Um, Mr. C's? Yes. So, Mr. C's was a question. So Mr. C's is completely sold out. Uh, tower one and tower two, they've topped off now and they're starting to, they just took the crane down. So they should be done within the next nine months or so. Um, pricing is anywhere from 1,400 to 1,800 a foot, depending on the unit and the view. 
is totally crazy, but they have totally sold out. Uh, nothing available anymore there. This yes. This an opinion question. Sure. So I don't understand. I mean, I look at you know, Bell Pile, World Coast Tower, these older, older buildings. Right. Like, not Harvard Cedar units, but is there any effect to what happened in Sharpside? So the question was, are the older buildings, and our old buildings are not that old, but right? we don't have the 50s here. So all of our older buildings, Yacht Harbor, Grove Tower, and Grove Isle were built in the 70s. So the question was, did the, uh, what happened in Surfside affect them? I think it might have affected them if COVID hadn't just destroyed whatever that. The size of those units, the older buildings have much bigger sizes, right? In today's new build, Park Grove, you know, you can barely turn around in your bedroom. You get no closet space, you get no balconies. So, you know, those buildings became very attractive because of the large square footage and the large balconies. Um, and nobody's talking about what happened to But they've all passed their 40-year certification. There is a whole different level of engineering and reports before you can buy and sell in there. But the effect of suicide has not been shown itself here at all, in my opinion. Any questions on any of these buildings? Anybody here? Questions? No? OK. No, I think we're good. Uh, so here, if we look again, last one we're going to see is price per square foot. So certainly Grove at Grand Bay has you know, really gone way up in sales price per square foot. A lot of really big units have sold in there. Also at Park Grove, those are our two leaders. And then the Grosvenor House, which is still my favorite building at Coconut Grove. You know, uh, Hugo builds an amazing building. It's kept its posh. It's kept its cachet. They built large units. So that, that building has really done well. We've had very few trades in some of the other buildings. So, all right. So real quick, something we've just started doing last year. Um, previously, my last 10 years of doing this, we really didn't go into the luxury market, but it has really become a thing here in Coconut Grove and more and more and more. So we're gonna classify anything luxury as five million or over just for the sake of this argument right now. Um, back in the day, luxury was classified at a million, and then two, and now we're basically at five. So, um, so Dade County luxury market, if you want to take a look at it. So forever, our luxury market was bumping around down here, right? Very little sales, very little deals. COVID happened, and look at the demand here, really spiked. And what's interesting is the number of people today that think they have a luxury home Right, compared to the people before. So I think we're, what this chart is showing us is that there's still a lot of sellers probably overvaluing their home based on the numbers they were hoping to get during the COVID craziness and the numbers their neighbors got and things like that. So I think this number will retract probably next year and come back down in line. But certainly just the sheer number of transactions, all of a sudden we had a lot more sales in Coconut Grove, not just Coconut Grove, but all over Miami-Dade County, over five million. Now let's look at our market here. So, so this is units sold. So this is condos and single family. So condos are in light blue, single family in dark blue. Again, 2021, if you go back to pre-COVID in 19, we had zero condos selling over five million. And we had three single family homes. Now, if you look here, obviously 27, 17, 9, 10. So this year, it's been a lot slower. Um, I think a lot of the stuff in the luxury space is very overpriced right now. Um, some of these condos are trying to get 2,000 a foot in the big, big buildings, but the market is more like 13, 1,400 a foot. So there's a pretty big disconnect right now in luxury sellers. And I think there are a bunch of sellers out there that hope their house is worth 5 million plus, but it's probably not. And that's going to change, I'm guessing, in the next year or two. Um, but just seeing this is just unbelievable what happened to our market here. So, and again, obviously, everything doubled, right? So anything that was two and a half is all of a sudden five. So it certainly helped change these numbers significantly. Yes, sir? Are you, are you talking about condos there? Or like no, no, the condos are in light blue in Coconut Grove, and then houses are in, in dark blue. There's only been one house that sold over $5 million? That closed, yeah. It was in the moorings this year for $6 million. So, so far, this, again, this is a 18 homes sold in Coconut Grove. So it's a tiny sample size. But the only one this year was in the moorings for six million, yes. But we have quite a few on the market. But again, our market has been dead for nine months, honestly. We're just coming back out of it. So I expect that 
if you come back in the fall, you'll see some different numbers up here. And then here we go. So at the end, just to look at pricing, sales price per square foot. Again, we're way up here, right? And so we can really see the COVID effect in every part of our market, but certainly the number, the sheer number of transactions happening over 5 million in Coconut Grove is unbelievable. I remember when I was happy to get a $350,000 listing for sale, so it's come a long way. Any questions, guys? Yes? Yes. Yeah, so we handle rentals. We don't manage them after they're rented, but we do handle rentals, yes. Yes, ma'am. The Kaufman Rawson building on the corner of 27th Avenue and Bayshore Drive is going to go boom, <laughs> probably in about a year-ish, I'm guessing. The same people who own that building own the Vita project on Grove Isle. So those of you who are not familiar on Grove Isle, they have the three old towers built in the 70s. For about five years, they've been fighting with the developer. They're finally breaking ground. It's a project called Vita, which is going to be on the northeast side of the island. But they don't want to start Kaufman Ross until they sell that out. So they'll build a 25-story, very skinny tower. Yes. Yeah, that will be the next major new construction project to hit Coconut Grove. And that is the end of that, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much. I really appreciate you coming. Um, we're going to email everybody the presentation so you have a digital copy. I would love for you to share with anybody that is interested. Um, my team is all out there by the bar, all these beautiful people. We have about 30 of us. If you want to have questions or want to talk about real estate, I'll be here for a while. I really, really appreciate you coming out. Thank you to my wife for everything. Thank you for my team. Thank you to Green Streets. Have a great night.